Greetings, boogie fans! Michael here, and today I'm going to be taking you all on a bit of a nostalgia trip by showing you my old Pokemon handbooks. These are not guidebooks. They do not tell you how to progress through the games. They are just general handbooks of Pokemon information, and at times, they are wrong. These handbooks are all published by Scholastic, and they seem to be a kind of weird combination of information from the games and from the show, which can make things really confusing at times because they're two completely different universes. But in some cases, they have information that's wrong in all Pokemon universes. I'm gonna be going through these today just for fun. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and uh, let's get started. So this is the first handbook I am going to be going over today. I'm doing this not because it's the first chronologically, but because it's the first I ever owned. My first Pokemon game ever was Pokemon Ruby, so that was when I really got into Pokemon was Gen 3. Prior to that, I'd watched the show a bit and had some toys, but I wasn't as super into it until I got the games. So this is the official Pokemon Advanced handbook. Now you'll notice Pokemon Advanced, that was the anime, the season, the first season of the anime in Hoenn. So immediately it's got an anime tie and this is anime style art and stuff like that. Published by Scholastic. I'm like 98% sure I saw this in one of those Scholastic book catalog things and was like, oh my God, Pokemon, I need it. These sticky notes at the top denote things that I wanted to remember to mention in the video. So. We'll remove those as we go. But when we first open it up here, as you can see, Pokemon Advanced Handbook by Maria S. Barbo. And it's just got a whole lot of information about uh, Ruby and Sapphire characters. So it mentions the games. Scrolling over here, this is the first page I wanted to draw your attention to. And I'm going to put on my gamer goggles to ensure I can read it properly. Hell yeah. So get this party started. This is basically just a page of various introductions of new things that the Hoenn region brought. So they mention double battles down here. Uh, they mention the new kinds of Pokeballs, the abilities, they call them, yeah, the special ability right there. Uh, Pokemon personality, those are natures, uh, contests, new evolutions. But this, this, part is, um, this part is funny. New attacks, watch out. Pokemon trainers, this po the Pokemon in Hoenn know their stuff and some new stuff too. New Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire characters have new abilities like Sharpedo's rough skin attack. Even after Sharpedo swims away, it's rough skin attack continues to do damage to its opponent. This paragraph is funny to me because it says they have new abilities. Yeah, abilities were introduced in gen three but then it calls Sharpedo's rough skin an attack, which it's not, it's an ability. And in addition to calling it an attack, they say it continues to hurt the Pokemon after they've swam away, after Sharpedo swam away. The only time that happens if you, is if you knock out the Sharpedo. You knock it out, it faints or swims away. <laughs> it's just pushed away, I guess, and then it harms you. So that is a funny, like kind of amusing, like no, that's not what rough skin is. This next page goes over more new features of the Hoenn region, like the swarming Pokemon, uh, all the various new berries. Um, they compete at badges, but this, this is wrong right here. How random. Wurple can evolve into either Silcoon or Cascoon depending on what time of day it evolves. No, that has never been the case. Wurple's evolution has never been time of day determined. It's always been personality values which are secret numbers that you can't see unless you hack the game. I'm 99% sure even in the anime, which this book talks about and covers, Jesse's Wurmple and May's Wurmple evolve at the same time into the two different ones. So they do not evolve depending on the time of day. This is just completely incorrect. Then it mentions cast form, hell yeah. School days, just the trainer school, every game has that. Uh, Groudon and Kyogre, diving, hiding and seeking, the rumor mill, Feebas, Latios and Latias, and actually references Alto Mare, the location from Pokemon Heroes, but I think that's actually spelled incorrectly. I'm pretty sure Alto Mare is 
two words, Alto space mayor. Here's a page on the various anime characters, Birch, Max, May, Brock, Ash in his new outfit. <laughs> no more Misty, RIP. Team Aqua, Team Magma, Team Rocket, uh, just anime information here. Now this page, this page is the quite the interesting thing here. So these are the three different leagues of the Pokemon world at the time. The Indigo League, Johto League, Pokemon League. I guess it's just, they just call it the Pokemon League. So first they've got the name of the region, Kanto, Johto, Hoenn. Number of badges to earn, at least eight. Number or names of badges. Now here's an interesting thing about this. The Hoenn badges are listed in order. Stone, Knuckle, Dynamo, Heat, Balance, Feather, Mind, Rain. That is the order that you earn Hoenn badges, I think always, unless you intentionally skip Brawly. These other two are not in order whatsoever at all. They've got Misty, then Brock, then Koga, then Erica, then Giovanni, then Sabrina, then Lieutenant Surge, then Blaine. And then these are all completely out of order. Whitney's badge is the last one. I mean, these never specify that they're in order. I just think it's so strange that the Hoenn ones are in order and then these two are not. But that's not the end of the weirdness here. Next, they list all of the gym leaders that you do. Um, Johto, of course, has the weird part where you can go towards Chuck and Jasmine first or towards Price, but Price is usually characterized as the penultimate gym leader. So that order's correct, the orders are correct. Notice right here, Janine Fuchsia City. You, the, you can see a little bit of white smudge around her name. That is because when I got this as a kid, I had never played a Johto game before. I never played a Generation 2 game and never played Gold or Silver or Crystal and did not do so until I played Soul Silver when it came out. So here I saw, as a kid, I saw Janine. Who the hell is Janine? I've never heard of her. And if she's appeared in the anime, I have no recollection of that. Um, maybe she appeared in the episode that Koga did, but Ash fought Koga, I'm pretty sure. So he fought the actual, like, like he fought Koga. Janine was not the gym leader. So I scratched out her name as a kid and then erased it later when I learned about her existence. So that is the, the smudging around that. But then look down here, Gary, Viridian City. Because Janine is here, the author was like, oh, let's do the Generation 2 most recent Johto game roster of the of the Johto or the Kanto gym leaders. So, therefore, why is it Gary in Viridian City? Gary has never been the Viridian City gym leader. Not in the anime, not in the games. In the games, the Viridian City gym leader is always either Giovanni or Blue. She wrote Gary because Gary is the anime equivalent of Blue, but it's wrong. Gary, the character Gary in the anime has never been the Viridian gym leader, and the only times it's even been possible to name your in-game rival Gary, he's just been the rival and then champion. He never became the gym leader in those games. So this is one of those weird quirks that's occurring because this is combining game data and anime information. It's it's very strange. I don't understand. I don't understand why they didn't just do the original Kanto roster with Koga and Giovanni. Because also, we know now the Pokemon timeline, the Gen 3 events take place at the same time as the Gen 1 events, so Koga would be the gym leader. It's just it's just very it's just a very weird chart. Over here we have all the various starters at this point in time. There are only nine. Simpler times. But nothing of particular significance here. Here are all the Pokemon that, the older gen Pokemon that were available in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Um, I'm pretty sure they're all here. If there's one missing, I did not take the time to double check that this was 100% correct. There might be one missing. Maybe one of you guys wants to look at that. Here's a page of just screenshots from like the first season of the anime. Compelling, I guess. And now here we get into the Pokemon data for all of the new Gen 3 Pokemon. It's just the Gen 3 Pokemon, none of the returning ones. And this, this is basically the rest of the book. However, there are multiple instances of just blatantly incorrect information involved in this Pokemon, Pokemon data. So let's, let's just scroll through here. 
turn through here. We're not scrolling. This is not a web page. So here's the first one. Ralts does not evolve. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Ralts, it just says Ralts doesn't evolve. It's just Curlia down here at the bottom. Curlia into Gardevoir. That's it. Ralts, no evolution. It's just a non-evolving Pokemon despite being on the same page as Curlia and Gardevoir and very clearly looking related. And then just on the next page, you notice here, we've got Ninkata, Ninjask, and Shedinja. Evolution, Ninkata, into Ninjask, into Shedinja, which is not how that works. Ninjask has never evolved into Shedinja. It's a weird split off thing. They at the very least could have done like a split evolution tree like they did with Wurmple down here at the on the bottom left, but they didn't. They they said that Ninjask evolves into Shedinja, which it does not. As we keep turning through, we get here, and here's the page on Metatite and Metacharm. Metacharm. I guess it's handsomer than other ones. <laughs> and then we keep going through, not a whole lot of wrong information until we get here <laughs> to Trap Inch, who this is blacked out with a Sharpie that young Michael did, but this also says evolution does not evolve. And then it was just Vibrava into Flygon, but I corrected it as a child. I uh, don't know why I didn't correct Ralts's page and did correct this one, <laughs> so two instances of a three-stage evolution and the first one just being like, no, you're not a part of this. You don't, you don't, you don't count. So there were no more mistakes that I personally caught until this page where I found two. The first is down here at the bottom, another incorrect evolution. Prior to my incredible uh, editing technique, it said that Clampearl evolved into Huntail, which then evolved into Gorbis, which again, no, it's a split evolution. Like they had the graphical capabilities to do it with Wormpole and they just didn't do it here. So I corrected it and wrote or. <laughs> and then the second error is a much smaller one. Uh, they misspelled rendezvous. <laughs> there is a there is a missing Z. It's spelled like rendezvous, uh, but this is rendezvous. And then the final mistake that I found here in this handbook is matting. <laughs> <laughs> Which tickles me. I don't know. Matang is it's like like you're saying instead of metang you're saying matang <laughs> And then there's just a couple more pages and it finishes off with the legendary Pokemon if there were more mistakes I haven't caught them, but yeah this official published Pokemon handbook riddled with blatantly incorrect information now here is the next handbook the official Pokemon handbook the deluxe collectors edition it has Mew and Togepi and the first one did not. Or as Pokemon 7 would want me to say, Togepi. This one, I genuinely have no memory of how I obtained it. I obtained it used. You're gonna, you're gonna see as we go through this, there's been some stuff done to this book and I don't remember when I got it. I had it in college and don't know when I got it before that. I don't know if my brother got it somehow and it ended up in my possession or if a friend was like, hey, I have this, do you want this? And I was like, sure, and then forgot about it. I don't know how I got it. <laughs> but I know I got it substantially after Gen 1 was out. Honestly, I think substantially after like four, five, and six were out, probably. I think this might be the former owner, Matt. So Matt, if you're watching this, thanks for the book. Also by Maria S. Barbo. So Maria got to be the Pokemon handbook person and royally screwed up the Gen 3 one. We'll see how she does in this one. So this first page is basically like, why is this the deluxe version? Uh, there's Togepi and there, there's Mew. There's a poster that is uh, not in here and some extra stuff at the end, I guess. So Professor Oak tells you some more, man, this is kind of falling apart. Tells you some more information. This is kind of funny. Apparently my biggest rival is Gary. Speaking to me, my biggest rival is Gary. Yet Ash also exists. So Gary is rivals with both me and Ash. See, things get weird if you try to combine the anime and the games. <laughs> 
Gary is not the official name of the in-game rival. It's Blue. They're just calling him Gary because that's the anime version. And Ash also exists. So this page is interesting because they're listing the Pokemon types. Except they're not types, they're elements. Each Pokemon is identified by an element. The element lets you know what kind of characteristics and techniques your Pokemon will have. Water element. It's elementary. They, they called it elements, which if it's ever been officially referred to as an element, I am not aware of it. I mean, I gotta give them props. They, they keep calling them elements throughout the rest of the book. But yeah, I just thought it was weird they didn't call them types. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this map. I just think it's a lovely photo of a lovely map of the Kanto region, very cool. None of this information is particularly riveting. It's just talking about your Pokemon journey and uh, stuff like that, how to catch Pokemon. Now here's where we get to the Pokemon information. You may be wondering, why does it go from the how to use this thing to Butterfree? And that is because someone at some point ripped the pages out for the starters. <laughs> why? I don't know. I told you, I got this book used and don't even remember how I got it. I don't know what possessed someone to rip out the starters, but I only got Butterfree onward. So on these pages, they have pronunciation, element, and then type is like the category of the Pokemon. You know how like Arcanine is the legendary Pokemon. Just still a strange thing that they gave that. Height, weight, techniques. Techniques, it's, each Pokemon starts off with a set of techniques such as scratch or tackle. These are the strategies or attacks a Pokemon uses to win a battle, it is how they fight. It's like the moves they're gonna know when you catch him, which is a weird thing to list because those are probably gonna get deleted anyways. But then it has other techniques, the other ones it learns as it levels up. And it's just, it's just a weird designation. Now here, right here, good against, bad against. These are a mess. Good against are the types that the Pokemon's type is super effective against. Bug is good, bug and grass are good against flying. Flying's good against bug, bug's good against psychic, flying's good against fighting. Should be noted in the Gen 1 type chart, Bug was also good against Poison, but it is not listed here. But then, bad against is not what the Pokemon is weak to. It is what types resist its moves, which is just such a strange thing to, to go with, rather than just what it's weak to, because that's why Ice isn't here. Ice doesn't resist flying, even though Butterfree is weak to Ice. Fighting is here, both on good against and bad against, because flying is super effective against fighting, but fighting resists bug. And it's just such a strange decision to make. And then evolution is normal. Normal just means level up. And then there's occasionally these Pokedex pick things, which are random. They're usually like tidbits from the original series of the anime. Just like, you know, this happened in the show. Thought we'd share that with you. So then we move on to Weedle, Kakuna, Beedrill, and so forth. And then there's something I want to uh, bring to your attention. Multiple things on this page. First off, Pidgey is a normal flying type. So the types that resist it are rock and electric. Rock resists normal, electric resists flying. However, they did not include ghost. These bad against never take into account immunities. I'll show you with an electric type, they just they just don't include immunities, which is it's just so strange. And then over here, the other thing on this page, Pidgeot's, apparently it's pronounced Pidget? Pidget. What, if it starts spinning, is it a Pidget spinner? No one has ever pronounced this Pokemon Pidget. It has always been Pidgeot. Or maybe Pidgeot. Never Pidget. How do you get it from EO? Then over here, normal types, Rattata and Raticate. Notice, good against none, good against none. And then over here, Rattata and Raticate, bad against rock. It's also bad against ghosts. Also, of course, normal is resisted by steel, but this is a gen one book. Steel, dark, didn't exist yet. Another thing I wanted to mention that I didn't think to mention uh, quite yet, the Pokemon have evolution level information. To my knowledge, all of this information is correct. 
it's just kind of weird that they have evolution level information in a book that references the anime, despite the anime not having levels. Over here on this page, we have Ekans. Notice how Ekans, it says it is good against Bug. In generation one, poison was super effective on Bug. But Bug was also super effective against poison. Yet, if you go to a Bug type Pokemon, it does not say that it is good. Oh wait, maybe it does. <laughs> Okay, I found an example. I, I knew I saw it somewhere. Pinsir, just a pure bug type, says it is good against grass and psychic, not poison. They are inconsistent with their type matchups. Not only is the good against, bad against language weird, but sometimes poison is super effective against bug and bug is super effective against poison. Other times, it's not. There's no way I could cover every single instance of wrong type matchups in this book because most of them are, <laughs> or at least somewhat wrong. But yeah, this this good against bad against thing just riddled, riddled with just incorrect information. And here's Pikachu, the first electric type, bad against electric grass dragon, apparently not ground types. Here's another example I found of a uh, wrong type matchup stuff. Uh, Nido Queen good against electric and fire. And apparently that's it. Not grass, not bug, and not rock. Like, <laughs> they just, that's more than half of the types that poison or ground is super effective against that are just not there. Okay, so this page, this page was kind of funny. Uh, just this blurb about Doug Trio. Doug Trio are harder to find than Diglett and are much more dangerous but Doug Trio still focus on defense. Really? Doug Trio focuses on defense when these are its base stats? Really? Uh, oh, here's another uh, fun, just completely wrong good against. Uh, apparently Tentacruel is only good against fire and bug, not grass, not rock, not ground despite water and or poison being good against those types. Here's one thing I thought I'd uh, just mention. Notice uh, element, electric and electric, because the steel type didn't exist yet. So it's, I mean, it's technically wrong now, but it wasn't wrong at the time, just thought I'd mention. And another thing I wanted to bring up, uh, never fear, a trader in Vermilion City will give you a Farfetch in exchange for a Spearow. That is an in-game trade in red and blue, just red and blue. Um, so this game, this book seems to not mention the, 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 this book doesn't even mention red and blue, but they're directly referencing something that can happen in red and blue, not yellow, which is, I, what was the publishing date of this? Copyright 95, 96, 98, 99. So I guess I gotta go with 99 as, oh yeah. First Scholastic printing November of 99. So I'm pretty sure yellow was out by then. This page about seal and dugong is funny because they wrote head butt as two separate words, <laughs> which just head butt. Its technique is head booty. Also references the Arctic. I don't know if any of its like in-game deck entries reference the Arctic, but I thought that was interesting. So here is the page on the ghosts of gen one and notice good against psychic, grass and bug. Psychic, first off, as we, many of we, us know, in Gen 1, they tried to make Psychic weak to Ghost and didn't. Psychic was immune to Ghost. So this book is going off of the intended type chart, not the actual type chart. But in addition to that, they also didn't list Ghost. Ghost is super effective against Ghost and they just didn't list it. So, why? Also, <laughs> this is just funny. Few Pokemon have an advantage in a battle with a ghost Pokemon. What's your best bet when you come face to face with a spooky specter? Try everything, you might get lucky. That's the advice. Just try everything. This is a handbook, we're not gonna tell you what's super effective. Just, just try everything and hope for the best, you freaking loser. Okay, this, this page is ridiculous. Marowak also uses the bone strips to vanish the bone holds his head and blah, blah, blah. That's just various Marowak biology information. According to legend, an angry mother Marowak upset by the cruel deaths of her children 
haunts Pokemon Tower. If you defeat her in battle, her spirit will finally be at peace. That has never been true. <laughs> Every instance of the Marowak ghost ha haunting the Pokemon Tower was her defending her children and then being killed by Team Rocket in the process. Not her being upset about her dead children. That's that's never been a thing. Oh yes, here's another fun, uh, fun Scyther uh, not being good against poison in Gen 1 when other bug types were. Clearly very consistent. Just thought it was interesting that this uh, this book has the old design of Jinx. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I feel, feel like a lot of you probably know about it, but it was uh, accused of being racist. Uh, fair, honestly. So they changed its design to be purple um, rather than this appearance. Um, but this is an old book. So it has the old art before they changed it. So here's the page on Tauros. And to my knowledge, maybe I missed one, but this is the only situation where a normal type is shown to be bad against ghost. They finally acknowledge an immunity, but this is the only time that I am aware of, of it saying that this Pokemon is bad against this type because it cannot touch it. Why is it just Tauros and not anywhere else in the book? I don't know. Here's a uh, wrong Lapras art. <laughs> this is official art, like the Pokemon company, I think made this, not Scholastic. Uh, they just gave the assets to Scholastic and this is just a wrong Lapras art. And it, this art has just been wrong from the beginning. If you go to like Bulbapini and look at like the Lapras art assets, you can find this image with the wrong under the mouth color. Okay, this was, this page is very funny to me. The Firestone transforms Eevee into Flareon. This fiery Pokemon stores thermal energy from the sun in its body, causing its temperature to skyrocket to more than 1600 degrees. Then run for cover. Flareon's fire powers are scorching. With blazing fire technique that is released from an internal fire sack, Flareon may be the strongest Eevee evolution of all. Despite having very high physical attack, and almost no physical fire moves. <laughs> and even in Gen 1, high physical attack didn't help with its fire type moves. Flareon, not the best one. Sorry to burst your bubble. It's probably Sylveon. But even then, even even with these three, it was Vapor Vaporeon and Jolteon were so much better when it was just these three. I just think it's so funny that the worst one <laughs> was listed as the strongest. Here we have uh, the information about Zapdos. Now, um, of course, there might be some weirdness over here, but what stood out to me Make a right before you leave the Indigo Plateau power plant. Uh, yeah. That's not where the power plant is. The Indigo Plateau and the power plant are on complete opposite sides of the region. And then right on the next page, there's Moltres. It says, on Route 23, on your way to Victory Road. No, no, no. That is not where Moltres is. Moltres is in the Victory Road, not on the way. It is inside of the Victory Road, which is within Route 23, but it specifies on your way to the Victory Road. So that's like two of the three legendary birds have incorrect location information. This page I thought was funny. Dragonair is a good Pokemon to have around on a rainy day. Most of its dragon abilities like Rap, Agility, Slam, and Dragon Rage make use of its long and powerful body. Yes, because Rap, Agility, and Slam are all dragon type moves. So then Dragonite, Mewtwo, Get over here, top 10 ways to care for your Pokemon. This is just various stuff that we all pretty much already know. But then you get over here and it says, question, my Pokemon won't listen to a word I say. It won't stay inside its Pokemon. When I ask for it to battle, it takes a nap. Pokemon won't you understand them and will disobey if they think you don't have enough experience. Batches are a sign that you know enough and have earned your Pokemon's respect and friendship. Here's a quick rundown. These levels are correct. In the Gen 1 games, these are the levels at which Pokemon will always obey you. But obedience is only ever an issue for outsider Pokemon, Pokemon with different original trainers than yours. A, if a Pokemon has your original trainer, it will always obey you. The, the issue of a Pokemon not obeying you, even if you were the one who caught it, is only a thing in the anime. So this is a thing coming from the anime. But then it mentions like, oh, you need these badges and these specific levels will make it obey you. It never says anything about the obedience only being a problem for outsider Pokemon. So that's just another weird, anime universe plus game universe incorrect mixing. Then here on this page, okay, now that I know all about being a Pokemon trainer, how to become a Pokemon master. It takes time, blah, 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 blah. 
You are eligible to enter the Pokemon League Regional Championships. There are several different branches of the Pokemon League, such as the Orange Islands League, references that. Each branch has its own gym leaders and its own competition to enter the Pokemon League. The most famous competition is held once a year on the Indigo Plateau, where more than 200 trainers compete. During the tournament, you will test your skills against the Elite Four. No. In the anime, it's just a tournament of various trainers. The Elite Four don't appear to be involved ever at all. Maybe they're watching, but they're not participating. In the games, you just fight the Elite Four. You don't fight like the other 200 trainers that are participating. This page is creating some fantasy Pokemon League combining the anime and the games and then it ends up not making any sense. So then it has secrets of the gym leaders. It, it just talks a lot about the gym leaders. Um, Brock, Misty, and then quicker information about the ones that are not part of the main anime cast. Then it talks about the Elite Four. Uh, actually seems to list their type, their, their types and uh, squads correctly. Um, so good on them. But then you get to this page and it talks about the Gary. For some reason, the previous owner scratched out. He has a total of over 200 Pokemon. Why did they scratch that out? I don't know. Uh, it's anime Gary, so they can say whatever they want, but kind of weird. Oh, also, Ash is Gary's biggest rival. Your biggest rival. <laughs> is Gary Ash's biggest rival? Or your biggest rival, or both? Apparently we now exist alongside the two of them. So that wraps up all the mistakes that I caught in this book. They have a page on uh, Togepi, and this is interesting. It's, it's basically advertising um, gold and silver. This whole page is like, yeah, gold and silver coming out next year. Uh, there's gonna be more Pokemon. Togepi is one of them. And uh, you're buy our new handbook when it comes out. I've never seen this handbook. I'm sure it exists, but I uh, thought that was interesting. And then the last couple pages are uh, just the, wait a second. Okay, for a second, I thought that said Togepi. I was like, wait, that's not the official pronunciation, but never mind. Anyways, these last two pages are just a checklist of the ones that you've caught. The previous owner uh, apparently caught them all. So uh, good work, Matt. So this is the final handbook that I have. And this one I got the most recently. I got it less than a year ago at a community yard sale type thing at a, at a park. And I saw this, somebody was selling it for like less than five dollars and i was like hell yeah i'm picking that up this one is as of gen 6. so end of gen 6 because it includes the omega ruby alpha sapphire megas and this one you may have noticed it has fewer sticky notes than the other ones uh because they got better at their job i was uh had a tough time finding honestly any incorrect information here they also limit how much information they put on each pokemon because they have like all the gen 1 through 6 pokemon in here um, so all they have is like pronunciation, or I guess I should this should pronunciation, height, weight, possible moves. Uh, of course, it's not all of its moves, but it's several of them. And it has uh, all of these little tidbits about the Pokemon seem to be from the in-game dex entries, just like rewritten or maybe like, you know, rephrased a bit. And it includes Mega Evolution in the evolution lines. This is a very minor weird thing. And Jubilee said so herself that this was like, yeah, that's very dull and lame, but I'm bringing it up. Every single Pokemon on this page, its name starts with R and is pronounced R at the beginning. Arkin, Archeops, Arcus. Um, but it says Arceus, terrible. And Arcanine. But in the pronunciation, I just thought it was strange that A-R, 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 A-R-E. And that caught me off guard, so I was like, wait, are they trying to say it's Air Canine? Now, the word R is spelled A-R-E, but I just, I thought it was weird that all of these other ones are just A-R and then the, on the same page it's A-R-E. I don't know. Is that mundane? Absolutely. One thing I thought was an interesting design decision in this book is that notice how for Beautifly's entry, it only shows Beautifly, Silcoon, and Wormhole. It seems that if there's a split evolution, the if it's a fully evolved form, they only show that Pokemon and back. They don't show the other branch of the evolution. So this is just the three, but if we find Wurmple, Wurmple here shows all of them. So I just thought that was an interesting design decision on their part. But oddly enough, all the Hitmons, or as they say, 
Yeah, no, they do say Hitmon. I'm pretty sure the old, the previous handbook said Hitmon. Yep. Hitmon Lee. Hitmon Chan. Yeah, that is, that is awful. It shows all of them. Maybe they just had more room. I don't know. But yeah, I'm not gonna go through all of this book because it's very long and I, I did go through all of this book off camera. I'm not gonna do it on camera because there's no, there's very few fun little tidbits. But one thing that I, uh, stood out to me on this particular page is a uh, mean foo and mean show, mean shall. It's not the most phonetically best pronunciation uh, stuff because I'm pretty sure it's not show, it is shall. But it also says that instead of me and foo and me and shall, it's mean foo and mean shall. I've never seen that before. Don't know if I believe it. Here's another interesting uh, bit about Ninkata. To represent the strange split-off thing, they just said Ninkata evolves into Ninjask or Shedinja, which it evolves into both at the same time. So I guess that's how they best represented that. But at the very least, it's more correct than the Gen 3 handbook was. And here's Toxicroak. Toxicroak has this weird thing where in the anime, and all of this art is like, at least on Bulbapedia, Bulbapedia designated as like, anime style art. Uh, Toxicroak in the anime is always colored like it's shiny, which is very weird. Like all the sprites have it the same color scheme as Krogug, but here you can see very clearly it's very different. But that's just like, yep, yeah, that's a normal Toxicroak. It just looks like that. Saturn's Toxicroak in the anime had weird colors too. It's just, don't really know why they did that. Here's something of note here. This page about unknown does not include the exclamation point or question mark. Uh, just thought that was interesting. Wanted to point that out that those were just uh, just ignored for this. Maybe they never got anime style art. I don't know. And then the final most egregious mistake in this book is this one. It says that this Pokemon's pronunciation is Eveltal. Come on fam, we all know that it's Yaveltal. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that tour through my old Pokemon handbooks, which had a lot of just, well, the newest one was mostly fine, but the old ones, tons of ridiculous mistakes. Just very funny. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad revenue. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. And if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.